Hey everybody, welcome to a Wrestling Observer Extra. Second time we're doing this here. Monumental moments. We'll we'll take a couple <laughs> minutes and talk about it that we when we don't get to talking about it on the show. Here my Matt Ryan. Matt. Hi. This Hello. Friday. We're approaching 10 years of the shield. I thought this was interesting to talk about. I think this is a very interesting conversation to have because all three men have really dominated professional wrestling in the last decade. Some prior to that, obviously, Tyler Black was a big name on the Indies in Ring of Honor. John Moxley was a big name on the Indies. Went to FCW. You know, that FCW crew that they had, think about all the stars that came out of FCW. Strangely enough, right? Strangely enough. They never got those guys out of NX, out of NXT. You talk about I the top was... stars in this company, right? Talk yeah. about the top names that they created. Bra I'll put I'll put Roman Reigns obviously, John Moxley obviously, uh uh Seth Rollins obviously, Bray Wyatt, another FCW guy. A lot of big names came from FCW. Yeah, no, they they certainly did. I think it was a lot of that OVW effect when Cornette and Danny Davis were in charge or the slight the slim period when Paul Heyman was in charge. It was the right amount of talent, the right location, the right time and the the right kind of circumstances. I think as NXT grew, the net got larger, which meant the amount of talent coming in and out because FCW was way smaller than what NXT has grown into in terms of roster, in terms of things available to it. So they were making the most out of nothing. I think they were more, uh, and when you talk about OVW in the old days, they were doing house shows, they were traveling, they were building and working a schedule. So they were in front of different people, or at least in front of a new audience almost every night at NXT or in the Performance Center now. I think it's more homogenized, and that's not yeah, it's not me know, denigrating anything. I mean, look at it's, this. Look at this, right? You got Sheamus out of FCW, right? Yeah. Drew McIntyre out of FCW. Roman, Bray, Big E, another one. You know, he was NXT champion, but nobody remembers him from an NXT run. It's not like he was solidified in NXT. Xavier Woods, another guy. From FCW, the again, Usos uh, from FCW. All of those guys, except the Usos, Big E, and Roman, were wrestling either internationally or for bigger independents. Like Xavier Woods wrestled for TNA. TNA and his yeah, consequences create an impact. Yeah. I just uh, I just watched one of his matches. I was flipping through the channels. I was on the TNA channel. Hmm. It means something very different in a different era. Yeah. Very different. But look at it this way, right? I mean, this is a historic faction. This is the legacy that they leave behind in professional wrestling is going to be tremendous. I mean, Roman Reigns single-handedly, uh, you know, he's getting there, man. Is he Hogan levels? No, because I don't think the business will ever get there. But has he surpassed Cena as far as a main event act? I, I think I don't, uh, it's a little too early, but I think he's going to surpass Cena. He's done more with less because Cena, to start his run, had Kurt Angle, had the big show, had Jay, had established guys. Roman was growing with his peer group. Outside of Cena and Randy Orton, how many other quote-unquote top guys, including Triple H, but Triple H wasn't, it wasn't a primary player in a lot of this except for the feud where he ended up winning the belt, uh, Triple H did at the Rumble, do you do you see the different things holding Roman back or just holding this generation in a weird light? And here's a question I have for you. Yeah, yeah. In terms of stables where all three guys came in at the same time, because the four horsemen were already established in Jim Crockett promotions and then they ended up getting together. Yeah. Um, Degeneration X, similar circumstances, the NWO. Um, has there been a North American stable? Since the Freebirds, who came in together, built the stuff together, and had the same kind of cultural effect, and they became big the stars, Shield. all of them. Yeah, uh, as as a as a trio became, or or later on individually became. Uh, as a state, like leave the legacy they leave behind. 
to I think, where they stand in the history of the business as individuals and as the totality. I don't think there's any, but I don't think there's a case like this with the exception of the free birds. And maybe that's an outlier, but these are three guys who came in together, came in through the system and built their notoriety and their star power off of that stable, off of that angle, off of that group. Man, imagine if it was Chris Hero in that group instead of Roman. It would have been such an interesting It would never have worked. I don't think it would have worked. It would have gone a completely different way. Do you know it why it wouldn't have worked? It would have gone a completely different way. It would not, not because Chris couldn't have done it. It wouldn't have worked because they would not have allowed it to work. And also, all three of those guys don't have the same thing that Roman has. Hero. The sexy hair. Well, yeah, the, obviously the sexy hair, but it's a different kind of presence. Chris Hero has great presence, but he's a traditional pro wrestler. Roman Roman came out of the movie star factory. Like, like he's a once in a generation star. And you know what? He doesn't I have to look tell like you, anybody I, else. I, I when I when they debuted, when the Shield debuted, yeah. I was like, okay, who's going to be the top star here, right? Roman, you ever you could see him and say, you know what? That's that's WWE's guy. Mm -hmm. It was. You know, Moxley was the one that people were talking about. And to be honest, Seth Rollins did not have the best track record. I, I mean, I remember going online I mean, 10 years ago, reading about all this, and they were saying, well, you know, the problem with Rollins is that he's not a great promo, and he's going to have difficulty getting over, and his style, he's going to have difficulty getting that style over. That guy became the man before anybody else in that group. He learned how to adapt. He, Amazingly. He got in there, yeah. And it's a credit to him. It's a credit to Seth Rollins for understanding the gravity of the moment. I think all three of those guys understood the gravity of what they were doing and where they were going to. And as you saw that group get more and more, I was in the building for that Extreme Rules match against Evolution. And hot damn, was there nothing bigger than that reaction for a long period of time? Oh, yeah. Just the way that crowd was into all three of them, they were just, and then immediately, bang, just completely pulling the rug out of everyone. That is one of the most genius booking decisions of the last 20 years because no one saw it coming the way it was going to happen. And the way they pulled it off, the surprise that coming off of all of that with Evolution and just creating the three biggest stars of the next 10 years across the business. Yeah. Like, the top three guys you can I would consider Seth Rollins one of the top five guys in the WWE, even though he's just the United States champion and for most of 2022 did not have a belt. The guy helped carry the company through the pandemic, has turned himself into a larger-than-life sports entertainer when for... Or we were first introduced to him. He was an emo kid in Do It For Her on Wrestling Society X. He was Jimmy Jacobs' sidekick in Age of the Fall. And if you watch Seth Rollins when he was Tyler Black in Age of the Fall and the Tyler Black that ended up becoming Ring of Honor World Champion, you can see pieces of that in Seth Rollins, but it starts to feel like a completely different human being. Yeah, big, for sure. You know, John Moxie's a fascinating one now. Yeah. Because he he's he he's veered off into a whole different uh, positioning. He's changed the course of his career. Been an amazing addition to AEW. Single, I mean, really, uh, kind of the glue in that company. Very interesting, he might though. Be you know, the most important hire they had. Uh, uh, here's a question for you: mm. If Roman wasn't in the Shield, how does he debut? Do, what do they do with him? Does he just become like an underwear guy with long hair? I don't know. He could. They could have done the Layakis thing that they were doing with him in NXT because a lot of people, you know, posted some. Somebody posted a promo of him when he was in NXT, and he had pieces of it. What a great um, story WWE has for that DVD, huh? Yeah. Over and over again, I you know, all those. I mean, it's almost it's almost like the Flex Cabana stuff. Yeah. He, he very much is this generation's rock in how his character transformed and where he got, you know, where he started to where he is now has been just this interesting story of being the right guy in the right place but at the wrong time or being positioned in the wrong way. Because up until he came back in 2021 or 2020, 
people were not excited to see him. No, they he weren't. He got handed the Suffer and Succotash stuff. He got handed a lot of unwinnable situations to be a top baby face. Well, he took a really he, cool guy, and then you yeah. had a 70-something-year-old write lines for him. All right, let's see. Um, uh, yeah, what, what's a cool know. thing that people say? What's now? a hip thing? Hello, fellow kids. <laughs> um, are they... Uh, are they still talking about the Coleco vision? Burritos. Kids are into <laughs> burritos, Vince. But very interesting <laughs> stuff. But who do you think you think who do you think benefited the most by being in that group? I th I think it's Roman. Um because it allowed him to be the cool, quiet guy and allow Mox and Rollins to kind of handle more of the forefront and and be kind of the drivers of that stable. And it didn't overexpose him, and it showed how good he can be. It accentuated all yeah. of their positives. And people wanted the turn. For, yeah. They and, wanted and the them guy, to turn babyface. Yeah, and for the guy who had the least amount of experience, they put him in the best possible position to learn and grow. Their biggest feud was with three of the biggest names in the history of the business. And when you're learning from Randy Orton and Triple H and you're war and you're working against Batista, that's just kind of a serendipitous thing to really give all of those guys the best tools to learn how to be top guys. Yeah. That in my opinion is how you create and develop And they allowed stars. them. They allowed them to become yeah. top guys. They knew what the job was there. And, and really if you think about it, you know that for that first year run could have been disastrous for that group. With yeah, CM Punk the leaving, riot shields. Well, oh yeah, the riot shields. Well, well, if they if CM Punk had not left, what would the situation have been? You know, would they have become his mercenaries like they originally were going to be? Uh, just a lot of weird shenanigans. Paul Heyman was involved with that stuff. So I mean, it could have veered off very quickly, but it didn't. And you know, all three guys in in unbelievable positions. Uh, Roman. Being the guy, you know what I'm waiting for. When did they circle back to Roman and and uh, and and Rollins in a big way? I can see that happening at Media 40. You know, like, I hey, listen, I know all your moves. I'm the one that taught you stuff. I know, I I am your weak point. Man, how much money would that Rollins? Uh, have? what if what if Moxley? You know, think about that match. <laughs> well, that's that's yeah, going to well, be that's never to a generation. To a generation yeah. that is watching pro wrestling now, that may be the greatest what if to them that they never get to see. Oh yeah, that that is the Twitter TikTok generation, and I'm not trying to be denigrating, but that's just where the younger wrestling yeah. audience lives. Yeah, that that may be the match. Yeah, I, I that's the match. I think that's the opportunity. Um, you know, that's the thing that we're never going to get. To be completely transparent, I don't think we're ever going to get that match unless a lot of things break bad for one company or another in the next five years. Listen, I, you can't predict anything anymore with wrestling, no. right? I mean, we we saw we we're going to do our prediction show at the end of the year, and, and our recap show obviously in December. But think of all the, I mean, not these are decade big events happening, and we got it multiple times this year. Mm -hmm. These are a once in a decade story. You know, you get a guy like CM Punk goes to AEW, loses his mind, falls. You know, that whole thing happens. You have uh, Vince McMahon getting ousted by his own company. You have, you know, Roman on the run of his career. You have all these I interesting it, moving parts. It's the best run a heel champion's had in what, in 15, 20 years? It's For better Roman? than JBL's run on SmackDown? Yeah. I, I, I was never, I've never been... Roman is never has never been number one on my list because of the cer certain style of wrestling that I like. I got to tell you, though, there's no denying. When is the last time WWE had a world champion that was believable to the extent of Roman Reigns? Brock Lesnar, you know? Yeah. The early I, Brock Lesnar Brock. runs, that was, that was big. Because it was still the same conversation that we're having today. Who's going to dethrone him? Yeah, I, I was thinking in my head, and like, there's a few candidates, but the the best Cody. ones on the shelf. Yeah, it's Cody. But how do you get? The, how do they get? There's going to be the real interesting question, and if it's ready by Royal Rumble.
But if he is ready by the Rumble, how do you wrap up everything else? How He's do making you... tremendous progress, I was told. Good. That's Either way, that's great. But when you're looking and you're pin- putting the pencil down on two nights of WrestleMania, and you are trying to figure out, okay, I have all this stuff right now with Roman and the Bloodline and Sami Zayn. How am I paying that off on the road to WrestleMania? Or am I paying that off at Mania? Is it is it Mania is the downfall? Is the loss to Cody the downfall? How do you structure these next five months? Yeah. Because it's going to be a, a lot of plate spinning and a lot of subterfuge. This is the longest run we've had for a heel champion and a heel stable in forever in the yeah. WWE. Because look at how fast they pulled the trigger on the first Evolution breakup. Like, Evolution was grand opening, grand closing within, what, 18 to 20 months? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. It's like 03, 04, 03, 04. Like, it, it, it ended in earnest in, like, early 2005 after Batista won the Rumble. But it, it com- you know... Rated RKO had a, sh- a short shelf life. The two-man power trip got, you know, canceled after Hunter blew his quad, uh, blew out his quad. Um, where do you, like, we, we talk about, like, these historical runs, these historical times. This is the most interesting year in pro wrestling since maybe 2001, 2002. I think I think we've hit. Yeah, I think this is this is a I mean, we're going into a very fascinating year. Yeah, very fascinating year going into it. All right. That's it for today. I thought it'd be fun to talk about this on the anniversary of the shield. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. We'll see you all next time. Take care. Bye.